Dodge City and to the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the spell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. my office. Well, I never saw you in a riding skirt before, Kitty. <laughs> You've been riding side saddle? For the first time in my life. <laughs> At least I know how to do it now, in case I'm ever called on to be a lady. <laughs> well, I know ladies who don't always ride side saddle. Sure. Like that female wildcat down in the panhandle you told me about. What's her name? Oh, Bellstar. I bet she never rides side saddle. <laughs> no, Bellstar's a lady, though. And everybody treats her like one. Even though she has to use a six-gun to make them do it. <laughs> Maybe I ought to try that. Yeah, it takes more than a six-gun to make a lady, Kitty. That's a funny way of putting it. Uh, well, that isn't what Mr. I meant. Mr. Dillon? Uh, oh, Miss Kitty. How are you, Chester? Hey, I just come to Longhorn there, Mr. Dillon. What, trouble, Chester? Uh, not yet, but there's going to be as soon as Art Long gets to town. Art Long? Well, he's always been a peaceful man. Isn't he one of those nesters out near Sam Baxton's ranch? That's him. But it's another one of them nesters that's talking up trouble. A fellow named Hoffer. He's saying he's going to shoot Art Long on sight. Well, is he drunk, Chester? Yes, sir, some. Armed? He's got the biggest old cavalry pistol you ever saw stuck right in his belt. Real farmer style. Well, that may be true, Kitty, but those horse pistols go off sometimes. Well, bye later, Matt. Yeah, I will if I can, Kitty. So long. He sure sounds like he means it, Mr. Dillon. Well, why does he want to kill Long, Chester? Well, sir, he didn't say. Maybe he's just drunk and wants to shoot somebody. No, anybody. Sir. No, sir. He Hopper's pretty certain about who it's going to be. All right, Chester. Uh, don't stand too close in case he puts up a fight, huh? No, sir. And all you bully clubs, shut up and listen to me. When our wrong gets here, you're going to see his blood all over the floor. Right there. Maybe right over there. Uh, I don't know just where yet. Your name Hoffer? Barnaby Hoffer. What's the trouble between you and Art Long? You friend of his? That doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Because if you're a real good friend, I might take it to mind to shoot you too. I'm a U.S. Marshal, mister, and you're not going to shoot anybody. Oh. Marshal Dillon, huh? I'll take that pistol, Hopper. Okay, Marshal. Take it. All right. Now tell me what this is all about. I don't need no pistol. I He's got, got a knife, Mr. Dillon! Drop it, Hopper. I said drop it. No. I'm going to cut you again. Give me that knife back. You're kind of hard to convince, Hoffman. Did, did he cut you bad, Mr. Dillon? Oh, he opened up my arm a little bit, Chester. I better go see Doc. You throw him in jail. Yes, sir, I sure will. There's a saying that it's the gentle horse that's most dangerous. You don't watch him close enough. And so with Barnaby Hoffer, a 
farmer who hands you his old horse pistol and then snatches an eight-inch knife from the back of his belt. Well, Doc took a few stitches in my arm and told me to come back in a couple of days. And I did. And it looked pretty good by then. At least I thought so. You're going to have to watch that cut, Matt. There might be an infection in it. What are you talking about, Doc? Looks as clean as rain to me. Well, how do you know what that idiot's been using his knife on? Probably sticks hogs with it all day and uses it to clean his boots at night. Yeah, sure, but my arm bled a lot. That got it clean. That and uh, all the turpentine you poured into it. Hurt, didn't it? <sighs> you know, someday, Doc, if my luck holds, I'm going to get a chance to work on you. Oh, no, you know, I'd sooner die... I'd sooner lie in the snow and bleed to death all alone without anybody around even to bury me. <laughs> How did you get in the snow, Doc? Oh, I just hate snow. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. Oh, come in, come in. Oh, hello, Chester. Hey, Doc, hey, Mr. Dillon, Art Long has been killed. What? Yes, sir. A cowboy just came into the office and told me. Said he rode by his cabin this afternoon and he found him there laying right in the door. Barnaby Hoffer must have done it. Hoffer? I thought you had him in jail, Matt. Well, I turned him loose next morning, Doc. He seemed calm enough then. I guess I made a mistake. I guess you did, all right. Maybe we shouldn't have stopped to bury Art Long. Arthur may be a long way from here, but now... Uh, we couldn't leave him lying there, Chester. No, sir, I guess not. Poor fella. Well, there's Hoffer's cabin. Yes, sir. Hey, we've done pretty good at that. It's hardly past daylight. Looks like his door's open. Yeah, then he must be inside. He wouldn't go off and leave his door open. No. Now, wait a minute. Look mm -hmm. over there, Chester. What? Why, it's him. Oh, he looks dead. Yeah. Come on. Oh. 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 He's been shot, Mr. Dillon. With a shotgun. Just like Art Law. At least still breathing. Hopper? Uh, Hopper. Marshal Dillon, Hoffer. Uh, hey. Uh, Marshal. Uh, I'm tore all apart. Took a load of buckshot when I opened the door. Who did it, Hoffer? Did you see him? Sam Baxton. He did it. Sam Baxton? Who killed Art Long, Hoffer? Did you? Art Long. Is he dead? Yeah. Bo both of us. Dead. <laughs> I don't want to die. Yeah, it's a wonder he lived this long. Gosh, Mr. Dillon, I, I just can't believe Sam Baxton done this. Why? Just because Baxton's a big rancher and pretty respectable? He's also a mean old devil. And these men are nesters. Come on, let's go find him, Chester. Hello? Anybody home? Marshal Dillon and Chester. Hello, Miss Oh, ma'am. Well, don't stand around out there. Come on in. Set a while. Thank you, I got two pots of coffee on the stove. Well, we don't want to bother you none, Miss Baxton. Bother? Why, well, love company. And besides, you don't get out this way very often, Marshal. You're just going to have to stay and eat dinner with us. Sam! Sam, we've got company. Hello, Baxton. What are you doing here, Marshal? Why, Sam, that's no way to... Shut up, woman. Oh, please, Sam, don't talk like that. Want to get whooped instead? Well, do you? No, Sam. I asked what you're doing here, Marshal. Yeah, 
Yeah, I heard you. Well, say it out. We're busy around here. You know Art Long and Barnaby Hoffer? I know them. Dirty nesters. Well, they're both dead, Baxter. Good. Oh, no. They both got killed the same way. What do I care how they got killed, as long as they're dead? I'm going to tell you anyway, Baxton. Each of them, when he came out of his cabin first thing in the morning, was killed by a man waiting outside with a shotgun. Oh, you know all that. You, you weren't there. Barnaby Hoffer was still alive when we got there, Baxton. Still alive? He died pretty quick, but before he did, he told me who shot him. Did he? And who was that, Marshal? You. Oh, no. No, it couldn't be. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's what he said. I'm going to have to arrest you, Baxton. Arrest me? On the word of a dead sodbuster? <laughs> Who's going to believe it? The court will decide that, but it's enough evidence to hold you on. What makes you think Hoffer wasn't lying? He knew he was going to die, and it was his last chance to get me in trouble. That's what happened. You'll get a trial, Baxton. You can defend yourself there. Right now, you're going to jail. I'm charging you with two murders. But Art Long was dead. He didn't tell you nothing, Marshal. He and Hoffer were killed exactly the same way, ma'am. Looks like one man killed both of them. Come on, Marshal. If we're going to jail, let's go. And you stay out here, woman. I don't want you running into Dodge all the time I'm there. All right, Sam. And don't go talking your fool head off to everybody about this either. I won't. When we get this business over with, Marshal, I'm going to give you a lot of trouble. You're going to wish you never come near me. As soon as I get Kitty fixed up here. Oh, Matt. Kitty? What's that, a black eye? What happened? It's none of your business. <laughs> How's your arm, Matt? His arm's all right, Kitty. Just comes up here to bother me. Well, somebody's got to keep you from sleeping all day, Doc. Oh, don't forget I'm making pretty good money off that cut of yours. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I can. Thanks, Doc. Matt, has Sam Baxton confessed yet? No, I've spent two days trying to get him to, but he won't admit a thing. Well, if he does hang, there won't be many tears shed around here. Yeah, there's Ms. Baxton, Kitty. For some reason, she really loves him. Oh, that poor woman. I've seen how he treats her. Too bad she hasn't got a son to stand up for. Some kid about eight feet tall. And he'd be about eight feet tall if he was Sam Baxton's. Well, that man's tall as a tree. Is he still wearing that white hat of his? Yeah, the only time he takes it off is when he sleeps, Kitty. And then he puts it over his face. Must be like sleeping under a horse blanket. No wonder he's so ornery all the time. <laughs> oh, come in. Well, come on in, friend. Fellow downstairs told me I could find the marshal up here. Well, what can I do for you, mister? Oh, I've never been in Dodge City before, marshal. I ain't even been in Kansas very long. I'm riding south. I got tired of that coal up north. Well, you're welcome here. Well, I'm going on south. Well, what I come to tell you was, there's a little creek runs out of our Kansas about 20 miles from here. A fellow told me it's called Ginger Creek. Yeah, that's up near Sam Baxter's ranch, man. That's on his ranch, according to him. What about Ginger Creek, mister? Well, some fellow's got a little cabin there with a corral out in back. Uh, I don't know his name. Now, that'd be Jim Fowler. He's been homesteading there for about a year. Uh, no more, he ain't. Now, what do you mean? I buried him myself early this morning. I come by and found him laying in the door of his cabin. He was dead, but still bleeding. Somebody's tore him plumb in two with a shotgun. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, Radio's Outstanding Theater of Thrills, Suspense, launches its new summer series Tuesday nights on most of these same stations with more spine chilling stories packed with excitement and well calculated to keep you in suspense. This Tuesday, here the earth is made of glass in which a man experiments with crime on a scientific basis. Suspense, now Tuesday nights at the Star's Address. 
Don't miss it. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Look at there. Well, what is it, Chester? Uh, out there in the street. It's Miss Baxton. Huh? She's coming to buggy. Ah. News travels fast, doesn't it? You gonna turn old Sam Baxton loose? Well, I don't have much to hold him on now, Chester. No, sir. Not with him right here in jail when that last fellow was killed the same way as Art Long and Hoffer. Chuck, I guess he was telling the truth after all. Yeah, it looks that way. Well, I'm glad for Miss Baxton anyway. I'll open the door for her. Well, morning, Miss Baxton. Hello, Chester. Hey, come right on in, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, Miss Baxton. Marshal Dillon, I, I'm sure glad to see you this time. Well, I hope there aren't any hard feelings, ma'am. Oh, you was only doing your duty. I respect that. Oh, where's Sam? Oh, the cells are out back. Oh, you haven't turned him loose yet. Uh, no, ma'am. It's too bad about Jim Fowler Marshall being killed that way. But it was just like the others, wasn't it? The same man killed all three of them. And Sam was right here in jail. Well, I was just saying to Chester, news sure travels fast. How'd you hear about it so soon? It just happened this morning. What? One of our cowboys rode by there about noon, Marshall. He comes straight to the ranch and told me about it. Would you let Sam out now? I'd like to get started for home. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Baxton, but uh, I'm going to have to hold him for a while yet. But why, Marshal? What for? Well, Mr. Dillon, a few minutes ago you said yourself... That I you... said that he wasn't clear of this yet, Chester. You don't listen very close, Chester. No, sir, I... I sure don't. Marshal, you said that whoever killed Hopper killed Art Long, since they was both shot the very same way. Well, I know I did, ma'am, but... Uh... I've been thinking a lot about it, and I'm uh, just not sure yet. Even with the same thing happening again this morning? Well, i got to admit that does make a difference, all right. I suppose if one more man got killed like that, I wouldn't have any case at all against your husband. But uh, the way things are now, i got to hold him, ma'am. I'm sorry about it. Well, it's like I said, Marshal. You've got to do your duty. Yes, ma'am. If uh, there's anything I can do for you, Miss Baxton. Thank you, Marshal, but I'm all right. Can I see Sam before I start back? Uh, of course, ma'am. He's right through that door. I can't stay long. Uh, Chester, hmm? you've been up on Ginger Creek since I have. Yes, sir. Isn't there another nester there, not far from Jim Fowler's cabin? A couple of miles beyond, there's one. I don't know his name, though. No, that, that doesn't matter. Uh, Chester, go get our horses, huh? And bring a horse for Sam Baxton, too. He's going to go up there with us. <laughs> sure up to, Marshal, but I'd rather be in jail than spending the night in this place. It's a nice little cabin he's got here, Baxton. Yeah, you improved it some when you sent him into Dodge for the night. It's almost daylight, Mr. Dillon. Okay, Chester. Now well, I'm going to build a fire now and let whoever's waiting outside think his victims just got up. What makes you think he'll be there this morning, Marshal? Well, if he isn't, we'll stay here till he does come. Mr. Dillon, you want me to pull the door open when you're ready? I'll tell you when, Chester. And after he gets off a couple of blasts with that shotgun, we'll go out and try to take him alive. All right, Baxton, you get over there with Chester. Mm. And I'll try to get this thing started. All we're going to need is a little smoke going up through the chimney. It wouldn't come back when it's all over and cook a little breakfast, Mr. Dillon. Now, we'll worry about breakfast later, Chester. Yes, sir. Here! Hey. 
Captain, you stop that. What? Wait, he's got my gun, Mr. Dillon. You're standing in my way, Chester. Move. Oh, he got outside. Come on. Drop that gun, Baxton. I got him, Marshal. I hit him both times. Drop it, I said. Helping out, Marshal. Look, he, he's laying right out there. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. I never thought he'd try nothing like that. Walk ahead of me, Baxter. Oh, sure. Oh, Marshal, look, it's my wife. Yeah. She's dead. I, I, I didn't know who it was, Marshal. I, I, I couldn't see who it was. How'd I know she was doing this? going around killing people. Your wife shot Jim Fowler yesterday morning. I didn't know she hated Nestor's that much. Well, it's kind of hard to believe, Marshal. Yeah. But I guess you never know about a woman. Well, I can tell you about her, Baxton. Fowler's the only man she killed, and she didn't kill Fowler because she hated him. She did it because she loved you. What are you talking about? She was trying to cover up for you. Oh, wait a minute. She almost did it, too. She almost kept you from hanging. Until she claimed one of your cowhands saw Fowler's body. When I knew he'd already been buried. I had all the evidence I needed on her right then, Baxton. And the biggest mistake you made was killing her. I, I didn't know it was her. You knew. But what you forgot was that she'd have confessed to killing Wong and Hoffer. Why would she? Because she loved you. Besides, she couldn't have been punished anymore for killing three men than for killing one. You got it all figured out, ain't you, Marshal? Yeah, yeah, everything. Everything except how she could love a man like you. But then it's like you say. You never know about a woman. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Helen Clee, Paul Savage, and Clayton Post. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty, Roy Rowan speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gene Autry stops a lynching of an innocent man and tracks down the real killer on tomorrow's Gene Autry show. There's time out for Melody on Melody Ranch, too, as Gene sings Down Yonder, Blue Canadian Rockies, and other Western hits. CBS Radio presents the adventure and melody of the Gene Autry show every Sunday on most of these same stations. Be listening tomorrow. Meet William Demarest and Hope Emerson as the Cobbs. Sunday nights on the CBS Radio Network.